thank you guys for tuning in and watching the Buffalo Fanatics. If you guys like what you see and you like the videos and the content that we provide, click every link in this description or go to the IG page, go to the Facebook page, but most importantly, keep tuning in on YouTube. If you guys like the merch, www.bffanshop.com. And if most importantly, you want to join the Fanatic team, the Bing team, www.jointhefanatics.com. I'll see you then. It's your boy and I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy. And I am proud to present to you the winner of the live show giveaway. We had a live show last week, which was lit. We had almost just under 400 people viewing uh, for a good chunk of the time. And I salute each and every one of you. And on top of that, we gained new members. We got over 10 new members to the Bing squad. And I'm proud to present Jeremy Kongozar. Jeremy, a.k.a. Kangaroo, is the winner of the draw. Uh, and you are the new winner of the Buffalo vs. Everybody T. Oh, where is it? Oh, there, there it is. Oh, oh, oh where, where am I? Hey, there we are. So you are the winner of the new T. So email us, buffalofanatics at gmail.com. Give us all the information, uh, and we'll send your T to you. Salute to you, Jeremy. On to the show. Gentlemen, it's your boy Rico Back at it again, ready to hit you with another segment of questions of the week. Last week was amazing. I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm I'm gonna shoot you straight. Those questions were actually damn impressive, and I look forward to reading each and every one of these questions going on right now. Cause the Bing team is where it's at, and I'm telling you. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you want to join the Bing team? You want to be part of me answering all your questions? All you gotta do is join the Bing team, man. How you do it? join the fanatics.com that's it that's all that's how you get to it ladies and gentlemen welcome to another segment of questions of the week and here we go we're starting it off with a banger from my guy kenny g the saxophone player kenny g my guy here's what kenny g has to say if we beat the cowboys the way we beat the dolphins and broncos do you think that the w will put the rest of the nfl on notice yes no or why not here's the deal absolutely 1000%. We beat the Cowboys. Now, here's the thing. There are some Bills haters that are just ingrained in them to just hate on the Bills because they will never believe in the Bills. Because for the last 20 years, we've just been <laughs> average at best or just a trash team. Now that we're coming up, we have to do it consistently. Now, does a W versus the Dallas Cowboys mean something on live TV for a lot of people to watch? And we actually put a, a, a definition win against the Cowboys. Yeah, damn right people are going to be noticing us. Because at that point, it'll make us 9-3, and three, right? A shoe win for not only a wild card spot, but a strong wild card position. And now, our fate is in our hands. We don't have to worry about other people. We just need two more wins to solidify ourselves getting to the playoffs. And the last five games are against teams that are on the rise, right? Statistically, that's just what it is. The Dallas Cowboys... Obviously, they've got a great deal of talent on that team. Then you got the Pittsburgh Steelers that are on a mini win streak. Depending, not not putting putting aside who the quarterback is, they're on a win streak. Then you got the Patriots. Then you got the Ravens and the Jets. Right now, the Jets are putting some W's together. Right, Sam Darnold is back in the fold, so it, it's not going to be easy. But these last four to five games are going to tell us what this team is about. Yes, there's been tests all week, all year long. But guess what? A, a win against the Dallas Cowboys, that's just the beginning of what people are now going to have to respect. So great question from my guy, Kenny G. Moving on to the next one. Scott Devereaux, my guy Scott Devereaux says, if Josh Allen were a Thanksgiving dish, what would he be? <laughs> if if Josh Allen was a Thanksgiving dish, what would he be? Um, That's a damn good question, bro. It all depends, man. If you if you from a Caribbean house, what do you what do you call it? I mean, I'm from a Caribbean home. What are you gonna call them, right? Um, but for the standard Americans, the Americans out there, um, if I'm gonna make Josh something part of this Thanksgiving dish, I'm gonna make him. Um, damn, man, that's a damn good question. I'm thinking of like what I put on my plate, right? That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking. Let's put it this way: He ain't no cranberry sauce. He ain't no cranberry sauce, I, I, and that's just me. However, some people might claim him as cranberry sauce because that's the extra bit that makes the meal 
that much better. If you if you put it towards, you know what? I'll call, I'll say he's cranberry. I personally don't like cranberry, but a lot of people love it. And what they usually tell me about cranberry, because I'm like, yo, why are you messing with cranberry? Because it's that extra little bit that makes that gives a kick to the meal. That's what some people say. I think it's disgusting. But some people, that's what they give. So what gives a kick to the offense? Josh Allen. When he plays like money, you know what I'm saying? When he's making plays with his legs, he's he's making, you know, when he's throwing dimes and utilizing the play action and, and really staying in the pocket, that's that extra bit of spice, that extra bit of oomph that we need. Maybe, maybe it's cranberry. Maybe it's cranberry. Maybe it could be some stuffing. Some stuffing, you need some sides, right? But he's a main meal. So he's got to be a turkey. Man, I'm all over the place, man. We'll just keep it this way. Cranberry. That's what he is, man. Just cranberry. He's got an extra little bit of that oomph that people are looking for to, to put on their meal. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you might even go a little more by a little, little, a little hot sauce. If you put a little hot sauce on there, he's that little kick. That little kick that needs you, you know, to get you going. You feel me? So that's... I know I'm all over the place, but that's a damn tough question. Um, so I'll just stick with stuff. I'll just stick. Boy, I'm going to just stick with the Dan Cranberry. That's it. All right. Moving on to the next one. <laughs> damn you, Scott Devereaux. Damn you. Scott Blakely. My guy, Scott Blakely from the shy. My man says, Rico, case, the unveiling of change with blitz packages, defensive schemes, and hurry up offense has been astounding. Could this have been the plan all along? Reveal as you need to as your quarterback matures. When it counts with the toughest opponents, could it be Dable is brilliant versus Lucky? I think it's one of those things where it's a peaking. People are starting, the team is starting to peak right now, and that's what you need. Maybe it took time because of so many new pieces that came together this year. O-line, receivers, I mean, putting some things together with a quarterback. Some guys were injured. I mean, Mitch Morse had that concussion all, all off season, right? So they didn't really have much time, but it gave him time to build with John Feliciano. So what does it mean going forward? Is it scheme? Is it lucky? Is it Dable saving some good stuff till later? I don't think that's the case. I don't think he was saving anything. He was just rolling with what the team was able to do. Now that he's seen that they're clicking, he's like, now I can open up. I can open up my playbook a little bit. And it seems that's what's happening because you're seeing a little bit sprinkled more of no huddle right you see a little bit of more uh devin singletary in the game so um we're gonna see a little bit more play action so i'm looking forward to a whole bunch of these things but is it luck sure is it him unveiling a little more and he was saving some potentially but why because we're executing more and the more we can execute the more we know about the offense the more that we're starting to really get it and gel the more he can reveal and it's starting to be at the right time. He's we're peaking at the right time, and it seems to be in the fourth quarter. How about that? How about them apples? So fourth quarter, maybe this is where we have to really get it together, and we're starting to do it now. And we have a big test this Thursday on Thanksgiving, and we got to take advantage of it. And we got to if we're gonna peak, let's peak and be strong about it, and and with conviction. And that way, we can keep this momentum and roll into the Ravens against the Ravens. But uh, let's not get there yet. We got to beat the Dallas Cowboys first. And I think we got the Steelers next. And then we roll. That's the way I look at it. Scott Blakely. Good damn question, you jackass. I love it, though. Rainer plays. What is the biggest area for Buffalo to work on to beat a high-caliber team such as the Cowboys? Um, It's trenches. Trenches, trenches, trenches. Because you got, you got Travis Frederick. Uh, Lyle Collins, I think that's what is. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. The, I don't know all the linemen on the damn Cowboys, but they got some good. Uh, they got some good boys on that team, man. Some tough linemen. So if we can at least push, get some push going on, and not letting Zeke just pick his hole and run through them like a Mack truck, we should be all right. If that's the place that I feel that uh, we should really get on top of is the trenches now i'm not saying it's a weakness because we put some some great film together the last two games uh furthermore i'm gonna say special teams right because several games ago we'll say a few games ago that's what we were lacking right hashka was not on his money but last game he put four in so i'll take it right not only that i think i need to see a little bit of andre roberts take something back he's screaming for it you can tell so if Andre Roberts can put something together on the special teams and we can dominate the trenches or at least maintain and not allow uh, Zeke Elliott to, to bust all over the place and we maintain our gap integrity. Yeah, I said it. 
Oh, we got, we got a chance. Oh, we good. We, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. My guy, Rainer Plays. I like that question. Well done. Uh, Anthony Jordan says, we need a Frank Gore interview. Shit, we're going to have to wait for that one, my man. Seasons, the season is upon them, so we're going to let them focus on the season. In the offseason, if he's still around, if he still wants to do it, man, we might, even, we might have to reach out to the guy, Frank Gore. Speaking of Frank Gore, my man actually reached out to us, and if you guys notice, sprinkles of the team wearing the Buffalo vs. Everybody Buffalo Fanatic shirt. That's what's going on right now. Uh, shout out to Frank Gore. He wanted to make, you know, I mean, a, a, a big gesture, and he did. And the whole squad is is rocking the sweater. So if you see these guys rocking the sweaters, man, <laughs> thank the man Frank Gore, man. That guy's a G. He's a G, a, a a true gentleman, and all class, all class. My guy, Mike Solo. I want to see Duke Williams active for the Dallas game. I think he can be a huge playmaker in the red zone. Should we be starting over Foster? Should he be starting over Foster and McKenzie? Um. Well, Foster's hurt, number one. So, Foster, I doubt, will be able to go on Thursday. So, that would make him inactive. So, then it opens up a spot for Duke Williams. Uh, they still haven't put anything out just yet. Uh, so, that will be interesting. I mean, it makes sense for Duke Williams to be put in. Uh, but they might even get some depth at the old line position, right? They might bring some depth uh, in the cornerback position. So, I'm not too sure just yet. But it just makes sense uh, for our guy, uh, Duke Williams, to show up. And red zone is where we excel we do well in the red zone and why not have a big boy and you know what i mean put his put his damn man strength on everybody why not right impose your will bring on duke williams i'll take it i like it and he's ready i can tell you that here we go german buffalo says goran alexander will they both be on this team next year would you give them one more year um damn that's a good question man listen put it this way if zo can still contribute, right? And that's physically on the field, I'm taking it because I already know what he brings to the team inside the locker room, and that can't be taught. You need that. But if he can still produce on the field and he's still a presence, you bring him back. If Gore can do one more year and play in Buffalo, you got to consider bringing him back, If especially if he's in shape, he's still intact, he's still uh, able to produce like he is right now. I see why not. You bring him back. Right, Devin Singletary is already learning a whole bunch from him. Why not bring him back? I say bring both of them back. If they're going to produce and they're an asset to this team, you can't let that type of stuff go. That's the intangibles. You bring them back. That's just my thought. My guy Thomas Falzon. What's going on, Tom? Uh, so what's Tom got to say? Thomas Falzon asks, will Josh Allen surpass 25 touchdowns and will Tredavious White get his fifth to sixth pick uh, this year? I think both of them are very possible. Right now, if you're talking about just passing TDs, I think Josh can do it. If he's giving us two two touchdown passes a game, he'll definitely get there. Um, if you're talking about total touchdown, total TDs, rush and pass, he'll get there for sure. Now, as for takeaway Trey, he should get there. If they have the gull to keep testing him and throwing the ball at him, one thousand percent, you gotta do it. He's gonna get that fifth to sixth. I can't, I can't see how he can't. So shout out to my guy, um, Tre'Davious White and that and Josh Allen, man. They're both doing their thing. Uh, and I think they can both get to those uh, statistics for sure. Tony Gonzalez, he says, who's going to have the biggest mouthful of turkey leg after we beat the Dallas Cowboys? Ooh. You know what? You know who's going to have it? The person that is the, the biggest uh, the biggest player of the game. And that's probably going to come to the defensive side of the ball. And it's probably going to be takeaway Trey. Or it might be, shoot, it might be one. It might shoot. You know who it might be? I'm going to call it right now. Big prediction. Bold prediction. It's going to be Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver is going to have the big turkey leg. And he's going to be gobbling that up. Because they asked my man, do you do you normally watch that game? Then he's like, man, I don't really watch that thing. I'm just I'm too busy eating. Right? And he's not too big of a cowboy fan. So I think he's going to have a big game. So shout out to my guy, Ed Oliver. I think he's going to have that big turkey leg. And he's going to be eating it up. So yeah, Ed Oliver. Turkey leg. That's what I say. We got a, we got a good one from Bo to Barber. He says, do you think we can maintain these 20-plus games the rest of the season. We have some good defenses ahead that are fast and stout. Um, can we? Absolutely, man. We definitely can. Cause it's not we're not lighting the league up. It's not. We're like we're like in the middle of the pack. So if we maintain 20 plus points, uh I, I think we should be all right. I think we should put some strings, some games together, right? A couple touchdowns here from the pass game, from the run game, a few field goals there. I mean, we're there, man. Two touchdowns, a couple field goals, bang, bingo, bango. We're there. So 
uh, I think um, I think we could definitely maintain that. I think we can make something happen. Uh, so, yeah, 20-plus TDs is definitely not out of the realm. I think we definitely can do that. Raymond Peterson. Raymond! What's going on, my man? Raymond says, are we done with the coach has to go talk? And I know exactly what you're talking about. Ryan Dable needs to be fired. Well, the, the critics are a little silent these days, man. Um, Dable has quieted a lot of people. He pretty much told y'all to shut the fuck up because y'all been talking too much. And right now, the last couple of days, people have been like, yo, he's been putting he's been putting some things together. So right now, um, that was the only person that was really on the hot seat, according to fans that needed to be fired and get this, get that. Uh, I think he, Dable, has silenced a lot of people. And right now, a lot of people are rocking with Dable. The team is rocking with him. And I'm telling you right now, we better start rocking with Dable because right now he's got these boys playing. So let's keep it up. Let's give him all the love that we can. That's for damn sure. All right. Joe Nelson. My man Joe Nelson says, with the ballot candidates out, how many Pro Bowl Buffalo Bills will there be? Will Josh Allen word consideration if he has two or, two or three big games in the next three weeks? Smoke, in my opinion, is the most locked player on the offense and Trey on defense. So who is the most locked players to make the Pro Bowl? Uh, Trey, Trey, Tredavious White, that's for sure. All right, that's, that's no question about it. Trey White. Uh, Jordan Phillips should be a consideration for the Pro Bowl. Right now, he's probably leading all the. He actually is leading all defensive tackles in sacks with seven. Right, those are two right there. Now, um, very high consideration. You got it. You got to put uh, uh, smoke in there. You definitely got to put John Brown. John Brown is having a hell of a year, and he's definitely consideration for the Pro Bowl. Uh, anybody else right now? Um, nah, Milano is knocking at the door. He's knocking the door because he's playing extremely well. A big game from him against the Dallas Cowboys should do it. But right now. This is where we stand. This is where we stand right now. So Trey, uh, I'll give him. I'll give him that. I'll give. Uh, I'll give it to uh, John Brown, um, and I got to give it to Jordan Phillips right now. Those are the two. Those are the three guys right now that are for sure locks. And there's got there's a few guys on our team that are knocking at the door. Our right, two safety tandems knocking at the door. Two linebackers are knocking at the door in Edmonds and Milano. Um, and uh, on the offensive side of the ball, other than John Brown. We're gonna we're gonna have to see some people step up. Josh Allen might he might he might knock on the door a little bit. Let's see what he can do in the next four games, and then we'll go from there, and we'll see how it goes down. But that's a great question. That's a great question. I like that. Richard Cataina. Why are we not recognized by any? When the NFL picked the schedule, not Buffalo, not the Buffalo Bills fault that other teams suck ass. Listen, man. All we gotta do is control what we control and win out the rest of these few games. Once we start winning, they'll show us the love. I was wondering the same thing. I'll be, I'll be honest, man. I was like, yo, we put together a decent uh, offensive production against a, a very good defense in the Broncos, but not a whole lot is talking. So you know what? They don't respect the Denver Broncos. It's fine. So now we got to go ahead and put the beats on the Dallas Cowboys. Once we do that, maybe they'll start taking us for real. But you know you know how people are, man. They're going to make excuses and say, well, the Dallas Cowboys aren't the way they're supposed to be. Uh, sorry, but you got a top five Pro player at almost every position. Quarterback, running back, receiver, O-line, D-line, linebacker. Like, you got a pro player in every damn position. So, if we go ahead and take care of business, I don't give a damn what their record is. But we go and take care of business, we should be just fine. We should be just fine. Uh, James Calkin says, winning against the Cowboys have extra time to prepare for the Ravens. That is true. Would make Patriots game possibly a division showdown, seeing that they have the Chiefs and Texans to play. That will be damn an interesting scenario to be in. But we guess what? One game at a time. Handle one game at a time. Once that scenario comes, we'll handle what we have to handle. But right now, the Dallas Cowboys is on our plate right now, and that's what we got to deal with. Ryan Sealback says, with how he's been playing the last two weeks at the end of the last season, do you think Josh Allen is more of a, of a November, December QB? Let's hope a January as well. We're about to find out. This is his first full season. So it's too soon to say he's in November, he's in January. Right now, he's looking like a damn November uh, November quarterback, but we've had to tell him to tone down on the damn erratic turnovers. So the fact that he's not turning the ball over and he's making positive plays is looking like he's a November quarterback. So right now, we're going into December. Let's find out how he does in December. So let's hold off and let's chill out. But right now, he's looking like it. He's looking like it. Thank you for that question, Ryan. Uh, New Mexico, EJE, says Rico. Do you think that our Bills are ready for the prime time because the Cowboys will be like a wounded animal on Thursday? They will highly, they will be highly motivated. Oh, you're damn right they will. Because right now the owner is not pleased with the Cowboys whatsoever. 
calling out some people on top of that. Here's the deal. They are a team that is six and five, but they shouldn't be six and five, right? Uh, who have they played? <laughs> the same thing could be said about us. Who have the Buffalo Bills played? So do we want to hear that crap? No, because we took care of business the way we're supposed to take care of business. Have the Dallas Cowboys done that? Not our issue. So uh, are they going to be a, a wounded animal ready to roll? Absolutely. What do you think happened to the Eagles? The Eagles absolutely needed to win that game against us. I, and they're on the road and they did it. What do you think the Dallas Cowboys are going to be doing at home? So we've got to come in motivated, knowing that the eyes are going to be on us and really put the damn, uh, put a good damn plan together. And if we could do that, we'll be just fine. Absolutely just fine. Michael Smith says, if we beat the Cowboys, does that mean we got Jason Garrett fired as head coach of the Cowboys? Yo, Jason Garrett is on a hot seat right now, man. And right now the hot seat um, right now to his owner, <laughs> absolutely. The owner has been holding his, holding him down for the longest time while everybody else is like, yo, get rid of him. I've been saying get rid of him since freaking two or three years ago. I don't think he's a good coach, but that's just me, right? He's got a lot of talent on that team, and there's too much talent for you guys to be six and five. That's just me. So if we beat the damn Cowboys this week, um, you best believe that seat that's already hot is going to be scorching hot. And he's got a lot of he's got a lot of answers, uh, a lot of questions he's going to have to answer. And they've got a few more games to go. So if he loses to us and it snowballs into more losses, yo, Jason Garrett is as good as gone. And he might even just go to the Giants because that's what I've been hearing. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, and last but not least, we got a question from my man, Andrew Penner. Andrew Penner. Listen, man, I saw I saw when I was reading back on the comments and I missed one of your questions, man. Dog, you know, I won't do that on purpose, bro. So uh, I'll try to get you on the next one, my man. So uh, Andrew Penner says, so our offense has been put. He's. So our offense has put up good points against a top four defense this week and number one red zone team. Also put the points up against Miami and a lot of points. What has changed the past two weeks? I'll tell you what's changed, my man. Execution. We are actually executing the plays that Dable is putting together. Dable calls the plays. We execute. Done. Simple as that. Because he's been doing it all year. We just haven't been executing. And we haven't been, you know what I mean, as one. So the fact that we were able to put some things together... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it comes down to. The teacher puts the lesson plan together. Can you execute? Can you can you do it? Coach puts something together. You've got to be able to execute it. Now, if it's a bad plan, then you got to reshuffle and get back to the drawing boards. In this case, it's been working the last two to three games. So we got to keep this momentum going and keep it up. So shoot, man. I say <laughs> Dable is on a roll right now and keep that shit rolling, my G. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, those are all the questions. I purposely made this a longer video, so we have a little something to hold us hold us until we reach the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday. So, if you guys are wondering how the hell that we can get part of this, all you got to do is join the Bing team, and I will read your questions online and let everybody know who's asking what, because it's the Buffalo Fanatics, and that's what we do. So, without further ado, it's your boy, and I'm gone. <laughs>